If you want to get acquainted with the robotics field more, check out the MIT Museum's Second Fridays events. At this one, which focused on ocean technology, I met Mike Soroka, who invited me to MIT's AUV lab. Our AUV lab is a, is a full research organization. We do deep sea research uh, and collect all the scientific data, um, as well as package it in a fashion that we can convey it to the community. He made this analogy, which might make it more clear. The AUV lab is, is sort of like NASA. It's a uh, government-funded organization uh, through a few steps where we're asked to do this sort of groundbreaking research in this uh, really poorly understood environment uh, with a lot of interesting uh, limitations, uh, communications, uh, standard communications, radio, uh, things like this don't work underwater. Um, there's poor lighting, there's a different buoyancy, uh, a density of the, of the fluid that we're traveling in, so there's this uh, similarity to this unknown of space in the ocean. Uh, even more challenging, I think, because of this challenge of communication. Seth Newberg told me more about the robots that the AUV lab makes. An autonomous underwater vehicle, uh, AUV, like the Odyssey 4, uh, the, the vehicle that we've developed here in this lab, um, it, it's a uh, robotic submarine where uh, the uh, no human rides in, inside of it uh, like a, a military submarine. Uh, there's no uh, tether, no cable uh, that's transmitting power and video and joystick commands up to a surf surface ship. Basically, uh, when the vehicle is at the surface, we're in communication with it, we uh, upload the program, and then we send it on a mission and say go, and the vehicle will di dive below the surface, and once, once the vehicle is below the sur surface of the water, we don't have any communication with it anymore. Uh, we, we don't have the, the cable carrying video or, um, or radio transmitter. The radio doesn't penetrate water. Uh, so the, the vehicle goes to the bottom of the ocean and surveys the ocean floor and just records all of the data, including water quality measurements, images of the ocean floor, um, and sometimes uh, sp mission-specific sensors for a particular scientific inquiry. Um, vehicle will operate um, anywhere from 10 minutes to an one to two hours uh, collecting data and then returns to the surface where we reestablish radio communication um, and go recover the vehicle, download the data for analysis and post-processing. Uh, every day it's, it's just kind of hoping that the vehicle comes home uh, after we send it out to the deep to ocean. Whoa, look at that pitch! Whoa, my God! Kill it! Mike also explained to me where the AUV lab fits in the local industry. In the field of ocean robotics or ocean, ocean research, our name is certainly one that comes to mind and, and is on the tip of people's tongues when they're talking about how do I get down there, how do I see what's there. Um, mm -hmm. We're also not the only way to get to the bottom of the ocean. There are MAM submersibles, uh, video cameras on ropes, so we are, we are a niche sort of field in this untethered, fully autonomous vehicle, this, this uh, low-cost, simple-to-use, lightweight, easy-to-transport vehicle. Hopefully in the coming years, uh, as is currently happening with space, uh, man unmanned underwater exploration will be more attractive and more used. Uh, it is in its infancy, right? There's no, there's no solved problem. There's, there's still miles and miles to go with a lot of the challenges that we face every day, the communications uh, being a big one of them, um, and uh, navigation being another one. So once those get solved, it'll be even bigger and more important. Okay. As part of our research, we're working on um, getting some uh, mission status feedback from the vehicle. After explaining a few more sciencey technical aspects of the robot, Seth revealed something truly surprising. If you can get creative, and build something like this. The hard part might be behind you. Seth went on to explain that the programming code, what makes it truly autonomous and able to function without a pilot, is available online. So this is a general purpose software, which is freely available under the uh, GNU uh, general public license. Uh, so you can download it from the internet, and uh, then you'll have to take the software and somewhat customize it for your particular vehicle, like some vehicles would have one motor on it, some have four, some have six. Uh, so you'd have to 
uh, customize for the particular sensors that you're using, the particular thruster configuration. Um, and then one, once you've made those modifications, you could use the software to control an underwater vehicle or any type of robotic vehicle that you're interested in building.